All right. Good morning to all. Welcome to today's session. All right. So my name is Mr. Kalai and with me is uh, Sydney Luke, one of our sports scholarship holder and also state national floorball player. So today's session is actually about uh, introduction about floorball. All right, this is one of the event from uh, sports and fitness uh, department. Oh, yeah, I'm the head of uh, sports and fitness department, right, Mr. Kalai. So um, we did uh, recently, we did uh, quite a number of events related to uh, sports and fitness, more to workout sessions, introduction of uh, various sports. We did badminton, uh, basketball, basic skills introduction. Of course, not many join. All right, it's all about your interest and passion about sports. When you have passion, then you join these kind of activities. Since the uh, pandemic hit, we don't have much uh, physical events. So this is one of the platform created for students to join, uh, to expose and also to give knowledge about sports activities, to create a fitness program for them. So I work with uh, quite a number of uh, students from various sports, such as basketball, uh, badminton, all right? So this time I'm uh, working with uh, Sydney, okay, one of the uh, of our sports um, student, also good in uh, have very vast uh, experience expertise in floorball. All right. So um, just to remind you all, uh, please uh, mute your uh, mic. And at the end of this session, then we have a photo session, group photo. Then I'll share the link for the feedback form and also for your ELE. All right, and um, we have a question and answer. All right, you can uh, raise any questions or queries you have regarding these sports, then you can uh, forward it to Sydney. All right, so he will answer all your questions and doubts about floorball. And so, uh, just for your knowledge, for to all the participants for today's uh, session, we have floorball club, right, at UCSI University. All right, Sydney, if I'm not wrong, he's the ex-president is it all right used to be all right so um it, after this after the pandemic over and then uh, once all the club activities resume if um floorball is still active then you may join all right they might have uh, coaching sessions all right they can train you all to become uh, not to say very professional players of course you can learn the basic things all right so i don't want to drag more i pass to sydney all right, hope you all have a very uh, good experience with this session and some bring back some knowledge, all right? All right, over to you, Sydney. Thank you, thank Mr. Kalai. Yeah, uh, so very first off, thank you very much to Mr. Kalai and SAA for allowing me to share my passion of the sport, which is floorball. If you guys cannot see my screen or cannot hear my audio, just uh, drop a message in the chat or just voice out and I will try and fix that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so very first off, uh, ooh, yeah, so the questions, uh, I have put the Slido link in the chat. So if you guys are, uh, you know, shy or you guys a bit paise, you know, so you guys can put the, put the, uh, put your questions in the Slido chat or there'll be a QR code somewhere on the screen. Yeah. Er, so an introduction. So I don't know if you guys know your geography but I come from a state called Sabah, which is on the uh, the west coast of Malaysia. And yes, I do not look like your standard Malaysian skin color, but uh, yeah, I am, I assure you, I am Sabahan Malaysian. So I'm just some basic, <laughs> basic introduction. Uh, my name is Sydney. I was born in 2000 and I play for the Sabah state national team and the national squad. So a distinction is that uh, I'm not national team, hopefully one day, but uh, so far I'm only the national squad, which is I am included in their pool of players, but not selected to represent Malaysia yet. Yeah, so next, uh, just some random info. I, I think it's kind of irrelevant, my height, weight <laughs> and age. And a fun fact is I love ice cream and I used to think that eating ice cream makes me fit because uh, because it seemed to, you know, back in uh, foundation 2019-2020, I used to eat a lot and I used to get fit. So a tip to you guys out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next, yes, I am Malaysian Angmukia, but I still Malaysian lah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, so a very short uh, background of where I came from. I started floorball when I was, I think, three or four years old in Sabah. Uh, that was when 2003 was when floorball was first introduced in Malaysia. And in 2010, I went to Brunei. So this is where uh, my school is. If you guys don't know where Brunei is, uh, you guys can see on the screen. Brunei is the small chunk of land right there. Yeah, and that was where I stopped floorball for about four or five years. And then when I went back to Sabah, when I was uh, form four, uh, yeah, then I continued my floorball career, so to speak. Yeah, so I think just a, a quick, quick, quick background check, right? Yeah, so let's do some question and answers. So all you guys have to do is you guys can just type in the chat, which sport has closest, closest resemblance to floorball so in your own opinion so you guys can just type in the chat or you guys could voice out if you guys want to i'll just uh maybe spend a minute or so give you guys time to think okay. ice hockey So uh, yeah, thank you for some of the responders. It's it's actually correct. Uh, ice hockey and uni hockey have the closest re resemblance. Actually, D the answer D is the most accurate because uni hockey is floorball. It's just a nickname, which brings me to the next question, which is also a kind of an ice breaking question. These nicknames belong to floorball except. So out of these options, which name is not floorball? So A to F. So from the previous question, D is a nickname. So which one is not a nickname? Just yeah, very quickly. I mean, you guys could just give a quick guess. Uh, okay, E. <laughs> Wackety. This will be the last uh, random question in the chat. So yeah. So E. Still E. Maybe one or two more people. Oh, OK, so I guess if you're from Penang, like Ika, you would know. <laughs> yeah, so the answer is E. So all these names are actually nicknames of floorball. Just uh, just an intre uh, very interesting fact. Yeah, so the very first question I think you guys will be asking is, I mean, about relatively the same thing. It's not floorball hockey or ice hockey. So. Uh, here is the scale and the rough shape of the floorball stick compared to the lacrosse, the field hockey, and ice hockey. And uh, in the pictures on the right, you could see I think lacrosse is the, the most different one. And field hockey and ice hockey are actually very similar. The only thing is that uh, you you don't uh, compared to ice hockey, you don't wear any gear except the goalkeeper. And the stick is actually has many orifices and orifices and holes inside. So uh, this makes it lighter and allows you to shoot the ball much faster. Yeah. So in later videos, you will actually see that uh, in floorball, when you look at the videos, you might not even see the ball because it's going so fast. You have to maybe get used to it. Yeah. But this is the distinction between the four, uh, four, the four sports. Yeah. Uh, moving on. So I'll bring you a little bit through the history of IFF, which stands for the International Floorball Federation and how floorball actually began. So uh, very quickly in the past, around the 1950s, they used to play ice hockey on the street. So street hockey. And even during my parents' days, uh, my mom who was from Canada, uh, she also played street hockey or the sort, and they called it many names. And uh, there's actually roots back into Canada, US and Sweden. and um, the sport was actually developed by Sweden and officially named a sport in 1968. So the, the sport is relatively new, I would say. Uh, yeah, and in the past, the balls and the, the sticks actually look much different and are actually much weaker. Uh, as I mean, you could compare it like badminton rackets. In the past, they used to use wooden and used to be very heavy and the tension used to be very bad. So I think likewise in floorball it used to be the same. Uh, yeah. So the official federation, IFF, was founded in 1986, although the sport, according to the logo, it says 1966, but IFF, which is the federation of the world that governs floorball, was founded 
1986. And then in 1992, uh, this guy called Mika, he was actually uh, one of the IFF presidents that actually started a Congress and came up with the officially the first rule book of floorball. So this is when floorball actually started to pick up in the world. And uh, in the next, ooh, okay, in the next one is actually shows the very first world championship. So in the first world championship, there was were only uh, Sweden, Finland, Switzerland, and Czech Republic. So these four countries were actually the very first countries that started floorball and uh, they're Nordic countries. And even today, they're one of the best countries in the world to today. So uh, I'll just, there will be a number of videos in the uh, presentation. So uh, let's take a look at our first video. So uh, that was the very first uh, world championships in 1996, where you see all of them have very long hair and their their outfit very baggy and yeah, it's come a long way since then. Next, we have Malaysia, which actually joined in 2002. So actually, uh, what is this new sport floorball in Malaysia? It's actually not that new, but it's because floorball took up really quickly in Penang. Pulau Pinang, which uh, they're actually really good at it today because they're one of the first states that started it and actually developed it in their co-curriculum. And yeah, you could ask any Penang person, they would know what floorball is. Yeah. Uh, next, we have 2017, where it was officially introduced as the World Games. So this is very important because it marks a uh, development stage in which they bring floorball into the Olympic stage. So they have not reached that yet, uh, due to only, I think, 70, 70 to uh, wait, 114 nations playing it only. Yeah. Moving to the next slide, we'll just see, uh, comparing to the last video we watched, which was the first, this will be the latest World Championships. Yeah, so for the very first uh, World Championships, Finland, uh, for this latest one in, which was, yeah, which was in 2018. So, so this year, there will be a new World Championships. So uh, moving on. So how is this sport played? I'll just give you a rough idea. So in the center of your screen is a floorball ball. Of course, it's very badly edited, but I think get the point. So let's just say there is two teams. There's the green team, and this is a guy, the captain, and there's a blue team captain. And uh, the way it is played is in a team of 20. So green team will call his friends. In total, will be 20 people. And blue team will call his friends. And there will be a total of 20 people on each side. Uh, there will be a field, which is 20 by 40 meters. And there will be two goalposts in which the goalkeepers will actually be there. Uh, 
So the way it works in each team on the field, there can only be five people. And within the five people, they usually start up with a uh, box formation, which will be consisting of the two uh, forwards or two attackers. There will be one center and there will be two defenders. And followed by the other team is the same, two forwards or attackers, one center player and two defenders. And definitely guarding the goal, there will be a goalkeeper. So the only person on the team who wears protective kit will be the goalkeeper. So in a team of five on five, you will see people moving around the ball. And um, let's say the blue team gets the ball and shoots a goal, which is something like that. They pass and they shoot. So this means that they get one zero. So the way the, the rules of the game to win is to actually score as many goals as you can uh, until the end of regulation, which is a total of one hour. Yeah. And once you score a goal, the, the ball goes back to the center and we will have a phase off. So it will be one person uh, clawing at the ball and trying to get it. And, and then let's say the green team gets uh, gets the ball and scores a goal, so the, the game will be tied at 1-1. So this is roughly how the game actually starts from the center, a phase-off, and towards a goal. Yeah. So uh, how is it run, actually? How is it run? So let's say we look at blue team only. So a blue team of 20 people, including yeah 20 people. So it consists of a goalkeeper. It consists of the attacking line. So in each uh, game, there can only be five players on the court. And typically, uh, probably not typically, but uh, at least at uh, the Malaysian standard, you have attacking line, the defensive line, and you have the very good at time wasting <laughs> line, I believe. Yeah, so a combination of these, they can mix around this team to strategize. So let's say they're at, they actually won, a, a, won, the, won the ball and at, is at one of the points, which is at my mouse now, and they're attacking this goal. So they want to have more attack. So they will swap their whole line at any time of the game. Yeah. And let's say the opponent is attacking them, attacking their goalkeeper. They can switch out any time uh, that's wise to their defensive line. And let's say it's almost the end of regulation and they're winning 2-1. And what better team to do it than the team that can very pass a lot and do teamwork. So this is roughly how it is done. So uh, the remaining players would consist of the bench warmers, which will be a reserve keeper and the three extra players in which they will rotate. Yeah. So the captain typically is the best, uh, best in the team. So he will typically be either the attacking team or the defensive team. Yeah. So uh, just some te technical side. So the technical side, the the goal is actually surrounded by a rink of uh, 50 cm, so half a meter. So when the ball goes out of the ring, it is officially called a out. And uh, the whole court area will be roughly 40 by 20. The game will be played in, a, in an hour, which will be 3 times 20, which is, uh, yeah, 3 times 20. So it will call it periods, not quarters. Uh, there will be 10 minute intermissions between each quarter. So. I think these I've highlighted, 20 players, five outfield players such as this, and the goalie will be playing on his knees. And the, once the goalie goes, so this box, once the goalie goes out of the box, he cannot hold the ball with his hands or he cannot, uh, yeah, he only can, he only can use his feet. Yeah. So to typically goalkeepers stay in their box. Uh, yeah. So the stick is actually made out of carbon, uh, carbon fiber or glass fiber which is used uh, for cladding on buildings, if you would uh, actually think about it. Yeah, so they actually use the same material, which is very lightweight and very flexible. And the ball is actually a plastic ball that can move. It says 100 MPH, but it can actually move at 130, which is in perspective 220 kilometers per hour. So the speed at which you drive on the highway, roughly. Yeah. So a floorball can actually be played in two types which will be the 5v5, a team of uh, five versus a team of five, and there will be a goalkeeper and a big goal, as compared to a, a 3v3, which is a smaller rink, and they use small goals. So there'll be no goalkeepers and 
there will only be small goals and there will be a range in which you cannot. Uh, but that's the technical rules. Yeah. So roughly this is how the balls can be played, uh, the floorball can be played. Uh, moving on, the rules. So the rules are actually different as you would seem to hockey, field hockey and ice hockey. So the very first difference compared to ice hockey is you're not allowed to fight. The moment you fight, you'll get a penalty and you won't be allowed to play or something like that, which means you cannot raise your stick higher than your knee. Uh, you cannot raise your blade higher than your knee, which is different from field hockey, which you can raise as high as you want to the sky. Also can, but in floorball, you're not allowed. And of course, you're not allowed to touch the ball. And some random rules by this uh, la lady here, you're not allowed to fly on court, jump on court. You're not allowed to play with three joints on the ground. So the feet, the butt and the arm. So you're not allowed to play with three on the ground and you're not allowed to hit the ball in between your hands. So it has to be below your hands. So practically, this position is not practical and she'll probably lose the ball in less than one second. Yeah. So the equipment needed, very briefly, these are the equipment you need. Of course, you need a court, a goal, a ball. This will be the outfield players and this will be the goalies players. So uh, when we come to floorball, we actually love our sticks very much because the, 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 the sticks are our heart and soul and it defines how we play because of the shaft. The shaft is this part of the uh, stick and this is called the blade. So the blade, there's different uh, concavities, which means the amount that is curved, uh, different uh, strength determined by maybe the color, uh, and the shaft, which is the vertical part, is de de determined by the flex. So I'd like to show you a cut section of a floorball stick. Uh, this, I did not break the stick. It was voluntarily, it was broken by itself. Yeah, so it releases a cross section, which you can see uh, this is uh, the standard material, which is plastic and carbon fiber. But uh, if we, so it really, it, you can see that it's actually very sharp. So when you actually break a stick, it's better to just throw it away because it's, it might kill someone. It actually can kill someone. In modern technology, in which uh, I am using as well, they use, uh, I think it was fiberglass. So it looks slightly different than the traditional carbon fiber. So this is roughly what it looks like. And there's many, I think uh, for a stick called uh, Raw Concept, there's 11 layers of this. And it makes it not only flexible, uh, it makes it uh, lighter as well. So it's easier to move around and shoot. So I'd like to uh, show you a video. I think my audio is on. Er, yeah, of uh, what, what determines a shot, which is actually the flex. So, uh, oops. apologies. Yeah. So uh, the reason why you could shoot that hard or that, and you make the ball curve, is because of the flex. So the higher the flex, the more flimsy the stick, and the harder, the lower the flex, which means it's harder. So what these numbers mean it is actually for every. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, for 23 pounds of pressure that you apply, the stick will bend, I think, 1 cm or something like that. So that's roughly what it means. So let's say the stick is 40. So for, hey, no, sorry, for every pound of pressure you apply, the stick moves 23 mm. Yeah, so it, it, something like that. So it means that, uh, so for example, this stick, to able to bend it like that, it depends on the flex of the stick and of course this guy is world-class player so he's super strong and he can actually make the stick 
flex that that uh, that uh, exaggeratedly. So to actually make the ball twist and turn like uh, the previous video, you will actually have to have uh, you first have to be strong and you have to have a suitable uh, flex of the stick. So uh, moving on to the shooting motions. So in floorball, we have three main of actually four main shooting motions, which uh, the very one of the very first uh, shots that you would probably not learn <laughs> is the slap shot, which in this process is actually where you're slapping the ball and it actually flies the strongest, uh, flies the uh, fastest. But the bad thing is that you need space and time. So uh, this is a very unclear picture, but uh, it highlights the four different shots. So the shot that you would take the most is actually the wrist shot, which is immediate shots, drag shots, which you actually pull the ball back and then shoot. Sweeper shots is you guide the ball continuously into a continuous motion. And a slap shot is where you actually just whack it and hopefully enters the goal. <laughs> yeah. So uh, sorry of the many videos, but we'll look into another video, which actually uh, is uh, one of the videos that I've done. I think I've done quite a lot of videos and it actually highlights the different, different shooting methods. So uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, those are roughly some of the uh, real life reality experience that have not been edited. And that is how uh, shots are shot and the goalkeeper that actually tries and defends the goals. So uh, just to highlight in actually uh, three different types, I'll just show you some. Oops, sorry. So in the wrist shots, you could see this guy is a world-class player called Villalastica, and his wrist shots are probably harder than mine by what, 10, 15 times harder. Yeah. So uh, the advantages of actually these variety of shots is that you have a different shot time and you have a different speed time. So the shot time is the amount of time in which you release the ball from your stick. So in the quickest time, how fast can you release the ball? And if you want a quick release time, you would go for the wrist shot because typically the ball is already at your blade. So all you have to do is just push, push it very hard like uh, this guy. So for this uh, sec second video, you could see that he's actually curling the ball to a shot. So the good thing about this one is you could actually deceive your opponent by secretly passing. So sometimes you could actually shoot and sometimes you could actually uh, pass it. So in if he were to deceive, deceive, uh, deceive the people, instead of shooting straight, he could actually shoot a pass to the side 
or he could pass straight to square the ball towards uh, towards his friend or towards another friend at the side. So this is a very good advantage of uh, the uh, advantage of the drag shot. Yeah. Uh, for the slap shot, which will be the last variable. So uh, the drag shot, the wrist shot is very good because it has a very quick release time and you could surprise your enemy by doing a wrist shot. A drag shot is very, very decisive because you could trick your opponent. And not only that, it's actually, to me, it's the most accurate version of a shot. And the slap shot, its advantage is it's the most powerful shot, typically, if your technique is right. But the bad thing is you need time and space to actually pull off because you need uh, this uh, quick release, uh, you need this high arcing uh, position that he's in to actually release it. And in the game, uh, the opponents are very close to you and they would like to, they would most likely hug you before you get the shot off. Yeah. yeah. So uh, right now will be a time of intermission. So if you guys would have any questions, you guys could drop a link in, uh, drop it in the Slido. Uh, so I think we have a five minutes break. Uh, so you guys can process the information and I can take a break as well. Yeah, so see you guys in five minutes.
So, uh, welcome back to the presentation. I hope you guys have gotten potty break already or had a uh, cup of coffee or something like that. Yeah, so we will continue uh, the presentation. So I'd like to start uh, by showing you a different aspect. So just now we were talking about the flex of the stick because of the shaft. Uh, and now we will talk about the blades. So the blades are as important to curling the ball and the shot selection, the shot quality, and how accurate you can actually shoot. Uh, okay, uh, so first of all, uh, if you are left-handed, you typically will use the right shooter style. And if you are right-handed, you will typically use the left-hander style. So that is the distinction between the left and the right blades that you see on the left side of the screen right now. Uh, of course, if you have special, if you learned, uh, like in field hockey, you start with the right right side, no matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, right? So there are some people that uh, actually have this. So although I am supposed to be left shooter, I'm right-handed, but I, but I actually shoot on the right. So there are some special cases like this where you start from when you're young and you just follow it. So my reason for following that was not because of field hockey, is because I thought my dad was a hero. My dad played with the right shooter, so I played with the right shooter. <laughs> yeah, although I'm right-handed, my dad's left. Yeah. So the, the reason uh, why a blade is so important is because of these two images, which is the concavity, uh, okay, the concavity and the curling, how curled your blade is. So the more concave it actually is, the easier it is to shoot. But it means that you have to release the ball slightly early so the ball doesn't go uh, doesn't go to space, doesn't go to uh, astronauts. So it will shoot and hopefully it will enter the goal. But if you sh if the concavity is too high and your release is too late, the ball will just fly up to space. For the curling of the, the blade, it actually depends on, uh, it actually affects uh, how good it, uh, which shots do you actually take the most? Wrist shots or drag shots or slap shots? So this will actually affect. The more flat it is, the easier it is to pass, which is actually the most important thing, and it is easier to shoot wrist shots and slap shots. But if it's more curled, which means you're more of a drag shot player, which means you're more of a tricky dribble dribble kind of guy. So how do you actually manipulate uh, the blades in which you use? It's actually using, sorry for the pixelated video, uh, picture, it's the only one I could find, is you actually use a heat gun to mold your sticks, which is very, very, very important because everyone has an individual uh, concavity or curvature in which you desire. And so the person at the shop uh, will actually help you mold it to your pers personality of your game. So in, re in line with blades, it comes to one of my most favorite and interesting parts, which is air hooking. So I repeat, air hooking, or the other name is called Zorro. -ing. So uh, <laughs> once again, if you would, if you wouldn't mind, if you put, the, put, uh, put your answer in the chat, which one, just by the name Zorro -ing and air hooking, which answer is actually the correct one of Zorrowing and air hooking. So is Zorrowing putting glue on the stick and doing some fancy tricks? Is air hooking screwing the ball to the blade or is it science? So I'll just wait maybe a couple seconds or something. Yeah. So you can put your answer in the chat if you want to. So C or A, yeah. So actually, uh, once again, zorrowing actually depends on the blade. So the answer is not by putting super glue or, uh, or, or a screw, it's actually by the blade. So if you take a look at the left uh, picture, it is actually uh, flat. And the blade has nothing to do with anything. You just pass and shoot normally. But if you look at these blades, there's actually a a cup at the end of the blade which allows you to do different tricks and it can uh, and these tricks can be done uh, using these blades there's a certain rule to it uh, it can be done in game or for fun so uh, the next video is very 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 
good. And this is actually the inspiration of why I actually got into floorball in the first place was actually because of sorrowing because it, it looks cool. So this uh, people from uh, uh, I think is uh, Sweden. They're very, very good. So uh, I think take a look at uh, their video. Yeah, so I think you guys get the point. Uh, I think because of time, I'll speed up a bit. Uh, yeah, so uh, for Zoros, you could apply them to penalties. And uh, in penalties, uh, just so you know, I think uh, in football as well, you have an opponent that fouls you at a chance of a goal or the game is drawn at the end of regulation. So yeah, penalties. So a penalty is where you 1v1 the keeper, something like that. So where you just shoot and hopefully it enters the goal. So if you get it in, you you uh, you beat the penalty. Yeah, sorry for your ears if you guys exploded. Yeah. So what? Uh, this is also another example of a penalty. I think what people miss most about floorball is when you actually shoot such an important goal and everyone is going crazy. Yeah. So the thing about penalties is that you could actually do the zoroing or air hooking. So this is the goal I did in the Slangodi. So it's actually very hard to do it in game as compared to doing it for fun because you are not allowed to bring your blade higher than your knee and your blade has to be in uh, according to the rules yeah so that is that is me which is uh, i'm a i think i'm an average dude if you compare it. so this is the world class air hooking in the penalty so the amount of practice and skill and of course the blade does a part, but to actually be so confident to do that in game is just insane. Yeah. So another example of a penalty where it is not uh it is not a Zoro goal, but it is a normal, normal shooting. But I think these are the hardest to actually win.
yeah. So uh, this was in the semifinals of last year's World Floorball tour Tournament. Yeah, so uh, just to quickly go through the world standings, when you have the comp the countries that actually started the sport, the, I would label them as God tier, which is these four countries, the egalitarian countries, uh, uh, Nordic countries, sorry. And you have the, uh, this these countries are the upper percentile. The quarter percentile would be the elite countries, Australia, Canada, and US. Then you have the not bad lah countries like Malaysia, uh, Korea, and New Zealand. And then you have the uprising countries, which are uh, mostly the African countries. Yeah. And then, uh, I know some of you guys aren't going to like this, but player comparisons, when we had the GOAT, you could probably say uh, these are the players you would look at. So Mika Kohonen, if you look the scoring of Kevin Durant, you say uh, Galante Karlström. Of course, uh, these are my own impersonations. Uh, if you have a tenacity like Russell Westbrook, you have Peter Kozolainen. You have the shooting ability of Steph Curry like Villa Lastica. And of course, you have the flopping, uh, uh, sorry, not flopping, <laughs> facilitating ability of LeBron like Rasmus Enstrom. And you have the handling ability of Kyrie like Emil Johansson. So note that all these uh, players are Finland or Sweden and they're just really good because the tier at which they uh, resound on are huge. So this is the standing of the women and men's teams in the top 30 countries. So uh, where is Malaysia? Malaysia is 20 for women and 25 in the world for men. So the top countries in the world by a large margin, so the world percentiles are these four countries. These four countries are untouchable by any other country in the world, which means that the moment one to four plays against five or any other country, you will see a drastic, they're gonna get owned. Any other country is gonna get owned if it's not these four countries playing against each other. So that is actually, that means that the competition has yet to be grown and there's a lot of uh, yet to improve. And followed by the next percentile for the women's, there's actually a uh, huger difference in the percentiles where these three countries are actually not too bad. And the men's, these these uh, six countries are actually in the same. And the last group will be these. So in these three percentiles are actually in which if they fight between each uh, other, the closeness of it, which the game will win is actually pretty close. So uh, I think Malaysia has some working up to do. So we see Malaysia. So let's get down to Malaysia. Malaysia's rankings. So the states that actually play are highlighted in black and those that aren't in white. So the countries in the first tier, uh, God tier, are Penang and Selangor, followed by Johor, KL and Sabah. And we have uh, Perak, Putrajaya, Sarawak and Negeri Sembilan. Yeah, so these are the states that play. Of course, Sarawak uh, does plays on and off and is only in Miri but uh, we'll just consider that. So there are actually a number of competitions, uh, the biggest one being the International Club uh, for Bosch Championships, the Merdeka Cup, which is a yearly national, and the individual state championships. So this is uh, one. So some pictures, uh, these are some pictures where I actually joined uh, the TAR Cup. Uh, this is my team and we got fourth place actually last year. Uh, this is me posing randomly behind a goal, uh, behind a game. Uh, we have the Merdeka Cup, which is the state team. I think uh, you could see me somewhere. And uh, this is roughly me in action. And we have the Salangor League, where UCL, UCSI was actually came in third. And this is the team led by Isaac Kwa and uh, uh, Kong Wei. And uh, this is some pictures. Yeah. So actually today we have, uh, I think we'll most probably end with this. We have uh, Emily Ko. So Emily, are you with us today? Yeah, hello. Okay. So, uh, as you guys can see on your screen, you have uh, the blonde lady, which is here with us. Her name is Emily Ko, and if you look at the pictures in the previous, she is actually there as well. Uh, wait. Yeah, yeah, she's actually there. <laughs> so, uh, her stat sheet and her CV is actually probably more uh, decorated than mine. And so, we actually asked ask her to come answer some questions. So, this is... Uh, where she is. This is the Merdeka Cup 2017. So I think we'll just end the session with a uh, interview with Emily Ko of Saba. Yeah. So the very first question, Emily. So in your opinion, what does it take to reach uh, state or national or international floorball state level? Yeah. Um, 
I would definitely say is the training, whether it be physically or mentally. Yeah, and of course, physically training physically is very important, but it is very important for us as um, as tech players to train our mental also. And um, team teamwork. Yeah, we have to work very very hard on our teamwork. Um, for last time, we would come together two to three or four days a week just to train together with the team so that we can work on our teamwork. And then in our free time, we would, uh, of course, train by ourselves. But of course, being a student last time, we would just spend our time either studying or just going around hanging out with friends, right? So I tend to forget the reasons why I joined Global because that time I was pretty young. I was joining all these competitions everywhere, but I I don't really have a goal in global, just so to say. And um, like I have the thoughts like, was it worth it? Or why I started global? I, I have all these kind of thoughts. So so to me, that is where the mental training comes in. Um, it made me realize um, how much I love the sport and subconsciously when whenever I step into the court, I think I think most of the uh, most of the pro players, yeah, anyone can kind of relate to this is I some I subconsciously feel free on court. Mm -hmm. I I think a lot of you can relate. I I feel free on court and um it felt like I was capable of doing anything, and it felt good to have your teammates putting their trust in you. And um, being the defender of the state team, um, it's uh, it's a really good feeling. Yeah, <laughs> you can say that. It's a really okay. good feeling. Yeah. And then, cool. um, yeah, <laughs> that was that is kind of what I have to say that to. To reach the Sabah or international state level in global. Well, thank you yeah. for your uh, insight. It's uh, so physical and mental, and you have stated some uh, examples which are very important. So that is a uh, so that is an insight on how uh, how hard it is to reach the, even the state level, right? Uh, and not not mentioning international or, or national level. So uh, the next question uh, for you would be, er. Uh, what aspect of floorball is most challenging compared to other sports? Just maybe a couple uh, sentences. Yeah. Uh, I think the most challenging aspect of floorball is um, handling the stick and mm -hmm. the speed of the game. The speed of the game. To a beginner, you will be having trouble getting to know your stick, of course. But after a while, when you got used to it, you find yourself having more space to improve by handling your sticks. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's a distance from you to the ball and you have to um, kind of get used to controlling the goal, uh, controlling your stick and working on your um, wrist to control the ball so that you can um, shoot better, I guess. And um, so when there's a distance from you to the ball, you cannot really see or feel the ball since it's really small and very light. Yeah. When you are running, you don't really feel the ball at all. So you have to really get uh, used to the ball, <laughs> running with the ball, yeah, sorry. And uh, not to mention the speed of the game is um, is, is just insane uh, in uh, state level, in state level. Uh, whenever I see the men's team play, I get scared too. Because <laughs> men, of course, they play more rough. Yeah, they play, they play rougher than women's team, uh, of course. So the higher level you play, the faster you have to react because the ball is very light. If you react faster, you can pass faster. That's that's basically that's basically what it is. Uh, to, to bring the ball by controlling the stick while running and constantly think, thinking a strategy. That is what floorball is all about. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very important to have another point of view on this and actually see that uh, the speed of the sport is actually a interesting. Uh, it's a very unique point of floorball. And uh, I think your point on men being more rough is true. But uh, from the last Merdeka Cup, I think the Sabah team got a lot of bruises and uh, there was even yeah. one girl that 
got slapped on the thigh and there was a print of the blade. Yeah, so uh, football is fun and all, but there might yeah. be some bad the things. Ring. Someone from our state team, they broke the ring because they fell. One, the, the other team, they pushed our men and then they just broke the ring. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, of course, we're trying to in, in, in encourage people to join. La. So, uh, so these things are only when you go, usually only when you go to upper, upper, I mean, every sport has its own roughness and stuff, right? And this is not compared to ice hockey, which you could actually get killed in by the puck or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much, Emily, for the uh, external panel for a different uh, site on floorball. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, I think that has come to the end of the session. I have three videos here for you, but I think uh, I'll just skip that and we'll jump to uh, yeah, some, I used to think I was really good, used to, yeah. So uh, I think now will be the time where the, the q and I think I'll just draw the questions up on screen. So, uh, sorry, we're going a bit over time. Hope you guys, I think you guys can, oh yeah, we have to, have to take the screenshot. Uh, I think I quickly go through the questions. So how many days you tr uh, train per week to get into national squad? So uh, I think, if you're, uh, there's two parts of the training. One is your physical training, one is the team training. So team training can only be done when you're actually uh, training with the team. If we're talking about personal training, which involves fitness training, uh, stick work, and uh, mentally preparing, like watching games. Uh, for me, fitness training and stick work, I used to, uh, when I was super free in foundation and year one, uh, not even year one, foundation, uh, foundation, I used to train three to four times a day. So you would say Chisan uh, Asi, which would be 21 times per week. But uh, that time I did not watch many uh, videos like recordings, which is actually not good. You're supposed to watch to learn how to play as a team. Yeah, and of course, go to the club trainings and stuff. So who is your biggest inspiration? So I would say Galante Kalstrom, which is the guy that I mentioned, which is synonymous to Kevin Durant. I think that guy is my biggest inspiration because in a, t in a league where everyone is 1.9 meters tall, so 6'3", six, 6'2", six, he is shorter than me, and he is probably regarded as one of the best scorers uh, to actually shoot the floorball. And he has gotten many titles, and he has gotten many best of the best floorball player in the world uh, uh, awards uh, over the previous years. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Anonymous. Uh, how do you discipline yourself to train regularly? So I think uh, so it, you have a certain motivation which gets you started, but what keeps you going is actually the habit and discipline. So the discipline is to be inspired, uh, get motivation, and from that, it will give you the activation energy for the habit or the discipline to actually be inculcated into your regime or your, your body. And from then, you can actually take, take off. But I think, for for me now, I have not much time uh, because uh, yeah, because of architecture. Yeah, can you do any skills or jungling the ball and floorball? So actually, I can, which is in the previous videos. So I think uh, what we'll do is we will take the screenshot first, and then you guys can leave. If you guys want to stay to look at uh, more of my videos which I've made in the past, uh, I'll play it on screen. So I think now we would take the screenshot. I will stop uh, stop share for the time being. After the screenshot, then I will open up uh, the videos again. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Kalai, how how do we do the screenshot? Yeah. Just, thanks, thanks, Jimmy. Just on your cam. Yeah, on your cam. Uh, countdown. Then we take a picture. Yeah. Hope everyone can turn in because, as you know, sports activities not my students join. And uh, also thanks to our special guest, Emily, for sharing your expertise, your experience in this event. All right, let's wait a few more seconds. Anyone else joining? Not many. I think still on beta. 
it's 12 o'clock. Oh my God. Alright. Anyone else? Can we? Alright, three, two, five. One more, three, two, one. All right, over to you, Sydney. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'll just quickly share screen again. So uh, in case you guys did not know, uh, Emily is state team and she's actually in UCSI as well. So she probably will be the next <coughs> in line to uh, uh, take the throne of president of the club because yeah. Uh, so I'll just show you guys some videos. Uh, so three videos of some of the videos I did. So I think I'll show you the very first without the junk jig. Uh, it's called Razzle Dazzle or Zorrowing. So this one is where I actually broke the camera of my phone, which is very sad. So I was supposed to hit the bottle and uh, I didn't. Yeah, so unfortunately I had to get, I had to stick up with the phone for a while. Uh, I think we'll go with our second video, uh, which is which is in the, I don't know if you guys missed the hall or not, but I, I do, it used to be my second home. So this is, I call it, uh, I call it, uh, 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 ba basketball, basketball floor wall or something like that. I used to have a term. Yeah, so yeah, actually because uh, you know I'm short, right? I'm only 1.76, so I can dunk. So I use my floor ball stick instead. Yeah, so uh, this is another video which uh, is on YouTube, but a bit cringe. So uh, these are some of the videos which I have uh, which I've done and are on uh, YouTube. So a very, very last video before before we leave, which will be the ending video, which is what is floorball by IFF. So it's a three minute video. So uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, lagging.
And that is all. Back to you, Mr. Kalai. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sydney, and to Emily for sharing your knowledge and expertise. Very good uh, presentation, actually, Sydney. Because uh, mostly if you talk about sports, and uh, they don't share much of uh, what you call um, personal experience. You know, when you talk about professional people, yeah. But when you come to UNUC, not much. Right, that's why we created this platform for our very own students, such as you, yourself, and other athletes to share their knowledge, you know, to so that the rest of the student but can, um, what do you call, um, get the knowledge from you guys, and maybe in future, if, if they want to involve themselves in this kind of sports, it'll be, it'll be a good, uh, uh, you know, um, sharing session, all right? So, um, for the students, those joined today, okay, this will be a uh, weekly session. Not only about this, not, we're not going to cover just one sport. Okay, I'm trying to get more sports in because we have sports scholarship students, those who have uh, national and state level uh, background, right, achievements and also their competition level. So I'm going to get different uh, kind of sports students in to, give, to, to share their knowledge. Right, so this will be a weekly session. Also, we have fitness programs. We have workout session, one hour workout sessions. It's a weekly session. Sydney also one of the uh, members in that. So, uh, on my personal, um, on a different note, right? I've known Sydney uh, quite long. Okay, at the uh, university. All right, I've seen him play or train on his own. All right, floorboard at the gym. I've seen him play at MPH. I've seen him jogging at the parking. So when it comes to sports in general, it's not about how much you spend to buy a shoe or equipment for that sport. It's your passion, right? How much you spend time to work hard, to put effort, you know, to train hard, to gain something. Even though now pandemic, you don't have space. Most of the students complain the gym is closed, the MPH is closed, we can't train. No, that's not the, the issue. The issue is your effort, your motivation. All right. If you don't have MPA, you still have outside. You have parking, so you have parks you can run. Now the parks are open. Of course, the gym in university, we have SOPs to follow. Government gave permission for commercial gyms to open up and uh, run regularly. Right. But for university, we have uh, different people to give permission, which is from higher uh, Ministry of Higher Education. So it's a different uh, thing that we need to look into. So. Basically, it's about your effort, your own motivation. So if you don't have this kind of um, uh, space to train, then you need to find somewhere else. So when you have the passion, you don't have, you don't give excuses. Actually. You find some other ways to train, right? That which I've seen from Sydney as he's a speaker today, he's talking about floorball. So he showed that example, that's why I'm sharing with you. So if you want to be any kind of a sports athlete, any sports, Right? Don't find excuses that you don't have that, that uh, basic things to train. But find a way, all right? Find a different place, find a, a, maybe not a proper training ground, but you can still find uh, parks or outside parkings to jog, train on your own. You, like a basketball player, you just need a ball, you know, to play around and then dribble around, all right? That, that, those are the examples, all right? So it's a good session today, good sharing session in terms of sports. I'm very happy because to see the number, right? Normally for workout session, you only have 20 because they, they, uh, I know students have a very difficult time you know, to spend to work out. But when it's come, come to this kind of sharing sessions about uh, particular sports, it's very good to see this number. So thanks again for you all, to all those joined today. Okay, I'll share the link in the chat box so you can fill up for the yearly points, right? Uh, my objective is your main main uh, concern is not about, I mean, of course, it's part of your thing, right, to earn ELE points. But please keep this in mind to learn something, new sports. And also, once the uh, club's up and running, then you can join the clubs and be more active, have a healthier uh, lifestyle, all right? It's not about just about earning ELE points, all right? It's about learning new things, um, involving yourself in new sports, all right? So thanks again. Thanks for joining this session. Thanks to Sydney, uh, Emily, and also those who joined today. All right, see you guys next week if, you're, if we have other events. All right, follow up with the Facebook post. Thanks. See you all.